morning. Uh, my name is Tim Gabrick. I'm the CEO of ISO Energy. Uh, we're a uranium junior that's operating uh, in the Athabasca Basin in northern Saskatchewan, all along the eastern uh, side of the basin, and I'll get into uh, a little bit of our story. Just a disclaimer that we do have some forward-looking statements in here, so please uh, go to our MDNA and, and, and check that out. As far as the background on the company, we haven't been around uh, very long. We were formed in 2016. We were an offshoot of NextGen Energy, the uh, NextGen spun five Eastern Athabasca properties into ISO Energy. It was obviously a very difficult time in the market. I've, I just put up a, a price chart just to show the star shows when we were formed. So obviously a bad time in uranium, but a great time to form a company if you have the wherewithal to do it. We got five great properties in, in the team took the opportunity to pick up a lot of really excellent land in the eastern Athabasca, which today, given how the market has is, is turned, is really impossible to do. So put us in a good position, and uh, we now have more than 20 projects. The, uh, our, our main project is the La Rock East project, which is home to our hurricane deposit, which I'll get into, uh, which is now the world's highest grade uranium resource. We put out a, a resource uh, in July of last year. Um, this property, the Rock East, was picked up back in 2018, May of 2018. July, we put in uh, a couple of hole, uh, hole right after uh, the end of our summer program, hit mineralization, and really that became the focus of the company for the next six drill programs in the next few years. Um, really, you can just see here, I just put in a bit of a laundry list on some of the highlights. Just started hitting uh, mineralization, you know, just extraordinary grade uranium, which is on par with some of the best deposits that the Athabasca Basin has, has had in the past. Hurricane itself, um, we have an indicated resource of 48.6 million pounds and at a grade of 34.5% uranium. So an incredible grades of uranium and also very consolidated, very small footprint. You see that almost 44 million pounds of that is at 52%. So incredible grades for any pro uh, commodity, but certainly in the uranium world. 95% um, of that contained metal is in the indicated category, and it's incredibly insensitive to cutoff. So we still retain 94% of that, of that contained metal, even at a 10% cutoff grade. Just a little bit more background of, you know, how does this fit into the uranium world and, and what are the advantages? Obviously, the grade is, is incredible. You know, more than 100 times the world average of, of deposits in uranium that sit outside of, of Canada and Saskatchewan. It's very shallow uh, compared to a lot of projects in the, in the north. So bottom, there's a, there's a diagram there that just, just shows it comparably to other projects. So um, with 325 meters, a little more shallow than Cigar Lake, MacArthur River. Uh, if you're familiar with the uranium story in Denison's uh, doing the Phoenix deposit right now, it's a little bit shallower than that. So it's only to say that the, the depth of it in the basin is not an impediment. Also, uh, as far as infrastructure, if you want to find a, a deposit in the eastern Athabasca or in the uh, in the Athabasca Basin, you want to find it on the eastern side. It's a little bit harder because there has been more work done in the past, but it's very uh, there's it's very infrastructure rich. So there's roads, there's power, and we're very fortunate to have it in a in a in an area that's actually only 40 kilometers even from the existing McLean Lake Mill that's that's owned and operated by Arano. There's also no water at surface, so. Those of you that have been to northern Saskatchewan in this part of the world realize that there's, there's, it's water and trees. And so if you can find a deposit like this where you don't have that impediment at the surface also uh, makes it a lot easier. The jurisdiction itself, uh, Saskatchewan, has always been a preferred uh, location for uh, electrical utilities, nuclear utilities to buy their uranium from. It's very stable, secure jurisdiction. That's become even more important these days given everything that's happening in Russia. Um, and, and that part of the world where a lot of the uranium is still coming out of, out of Russia and out of uh, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan. So those utilities, those customers are really looking more and more for what is a stable jurisdiction to find our next generation of supply from. I put innovation on here as well. Um, this is not the biggest deposit, so 50 million pounds. It, it's Cigar Lake, MacArthur. They're much bigger deposits. They're, this is higher grade, but... Um, really, there's a lot of work that's been done in the last few years, whether it's uh, in situ recovery uh, methods. Um, there's a lot of work going on that's looking at directional drillings, drilling from surface to, to uh, extricate um, uranium deposits. That's the kind of work that's being done 
that could be a really uh, benefit here because at the end of the day, when, when you've developed uh, deposits like Cigar and MacArthur, they're very big deposits. They're very expensive as far as capital, but obviously that, those, those number of pounds helps to uh, spread that cost. So when you've got a bit smaller deposit, some of these new methods are looking to be uh, quite advantageous down the road. So you've got the, the orange, the, the, the very bright orange that goes up against that line to the, to the west. Um, on the other side of that, that is just a, a property boundary, and that's a property owned by Cameco and Arano. There's obviously you know, something on the other side. We don't know the scale, scope or scale, but there is work being done on the other side. There's a big drill program going on this winter. So there is more of the story to come. There's, it'll be an interesting story to see exactly, is there a little bit, is there a lot? And that'll certainly uh, help to dictate how, how we advance hurricane going forward. Right now, next steps, um, we are undertaking a, a high level scoping study just to, to start looking at those different mining methods uh, what, what method would be you know, the best for this deposit. Also, in the absence of something going on on the other side of the border, how do you mine against a property border like that uh, without, uh, without causing any problems? So those are the kinds of things we're looking at. And, and from there, we'll start to think about you know, PEAs and, and, uh, and advancing the project. That's Hurricane at a very high level. We also, of course, we had all those other properties it really took a, a, a back seat over the last number of years as we advanced Hurricane. But over the last year, year and a half, as we've uh, finished up this, uh, this stage of drilling on Hurricane, we've started looking at some of these other projects and, and how do we want to, to go about um, exploring uh, to find hopefully another deposit in the, in the eastern Athabasca. This past, uh, this past year, 2022, we did over almost 12,000 meters of drilling on our La Rock, Geiger and Trident properties. Uh, also a lot of geophysical work, setting up those initial targets with uh, a number of these projects that haven't had a lot of work over the last few years. This winter, uh, we're back up north. We're drilling a as we speak. Uh, uh, two of our projects, we're doing some more work on the La Rock, uh, the Rock East project, which is home to Hurricane, but it's a big property. So we're, we're much uh, further up in the north eastern corner of the property on a, on a part called the Kernahan Trend. We'll do six holes there this winter. We're also uh, doing some initial drill holes on our Hawk property, which is down to the, uh, to the southwest of Hurricane and, and just another property that we like a lot. We've done some geophysics on, and that'll be the first time doing some drilling. Just from a very high level on, on you know, the market, you, you could spend hours on it, but you know, at the end of the day, for us, we live in the nuclear world, and, and you know, thankfully things in, in, in the nuclear sector, the uranium sector, are looking incredibly positive. So, there's just, you know, growing acceptance of nuclear in general. A lot of uh, talk about, you know, the importance of, of nuclear and its role in fighting climate change, positive ESG story. And that's, that's all been changing. That's, that's, that's a lot of development over the last year, couple of years where the story has really changed. And, and just, you know, Joe on the street is starting to realize that we don't get to where we need to go on climate change without uh, nuclear as part of that story. Certainly geopolitically, uh, a lot of things going on. The Russia invasion of Ukraine has really changed the landscape for uranium supply around the world, uh, caused a lot of issues with uranium coming from that part of the world into the West, into European, in, into US um, utilities. So that, that plays very well for our story um, and it causes a lot of, of interest in where is the next generation of uranium supply coming from. Um, and then just a lot of countries and, and, uh, and companies that are recommitting to nuclear you know, big ones like France that had kind of leveled out are now growing their, their projects uh, in a massive way. Japan is coming back to nuclear in a big way. And in, even countries like China, who's been a, a good story for the last 10 years, continue to strengthen their approach to nuclear. So that's all positive. And then underlying it, the fundamentals, um, the demand heavily outstrips the primary production these days. Inventories have been reduced and there is a growing need and will be a growing need for new projects. And in, in the last 10 years, with the lack of, supply, of capital being put into the market, exploration, development of new mines, uh, there is going to be a, 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 an inflection point where these projects are needed very quickly. Just from a company basis, uh, just to kind of wrap things up here, um, we're in great shape, but 123 million shares outstanding. We raised some money at the end of last year, about $18.3 million. So we over $19 million in the treasury. We have some marketable securities as well. That will take us well through this year with exploration, some development work, and uh, we're getting uh, good coverage from a number of, of uh, companies. That's really it. I mean, just uh, at a high level. So the resource is certainly a highlight. That, that, 
at uh, almost 50 million pounds at incredibly high grades. The location in northern Saskatchewan um, couldn't, be, couldn't have a, a better place to have a uranium deposit like this. Uh, our strategy, pragmatically advance hurricane and also leverage these properties that we've been holding for the number of years, trying to find the next um, deposit organically. And we have a great team. We, uh, we've got a great team financially. We just added a new VP um, of exploration, Daryl Clark, who's, who's, who's joining us here at the conference. Uh, experience at Cameco as the VP exploration a number of years ago, operational experience. So that will really help us in a number of facets, taking the company forward. And, uh, and we also continue to have great support from our majority shareholder, NextGen. They continue to hold 50%. They invested in the last capital raise to maintain that ownership. So great support, not just financially, but corporately. So that's really the story very quickly. I know it's, uh, it's a quick overview, but uh, we do have a booth and we're happy to take questions or chat with anyone offline. Thanks very much.